you so much for joining us today. We're happy to have you with us for the kickoff of the At Jones Performing Arts Series with the string quartet in Vogue. Now, you may be wondering, uh, why is OIT putting on a concert? <laughs> series, multiple concerts. Well, we put a lot of uh, time and effort into redeveloping the Jones Auditorium over the past few years, but none of that matters without people here to use it, performing, singing, and viewing. So we hope this uh, At Jones series will serve as a kind of way to show the possibilities in this room and do uh, new events that we haven't been able to have, uh, have as easily on campus before. So that's why we have a, a variety of events this fall, including a string quartet, a uh, New Orleans jazz act, a mariachi band, and the uh, music of a Charlie Brown Christmas. So there's a lot coming up this fall. <laughs> and it's most important to remember that technology and art are not uh, at opposite ends of the spectrum, that we work together really nicely. We started talking about this, we we're in, really interested in the collaboration and exploration that we're going to be able to pursue with this joint venture over the course of the rest of the year. So thank you very much for being part of that. Um, before I go any further, though, I want to say a huge, huge thank you to Dave Waldron, to the incredible staff of OIT, I mean, this is amazing, to uh, the Department of Performing Arts, to Dr. Sharon Nell in the School of Arts and Humanities, to Robert Radner, and uh, who am I missing? That's it. And Invoke, of course. So without any further ado, let's give it up for Invoke. <laughs>
Thanks so much um, for St. Ed's for having us out today. No. Uh, Department of Information Technologies, is that correct? Did I get that right? Great staff here, this amazing projection that's happening all around us to give them the world. Zach, I play violin over here on banjo is Nick Montopoli, Jeff Mannion on cello, Carl Mitza on viola, and some mandolin too. And that first piece that you heard was actually the theme song for a radio show in town called Revel, <laughs> written by Nick Montopoli himself. And this next one is also by Nick, it's called Dust Bowl. Thank mm -hmm. you. 
recognize that one. That was the second movement of Ravel's string quartet in F major. Um, really cool pizzicato stuff. That's going to come back later, but for now, we're going to play one that you guys might also know. Um, and I don't think it really needs much introduction, so we're just going to hop right in. So this next portion of the set is um, music by composers that we really respect or that we've commissioned. Uh, the first one is actually a tango by a good friend of mine from DC. Uh, we, we all came, came of quartet age, you might say, in the DC area. Um, and there's a really vibrant jazz uh, tango scene there. So um, this gentleman by the name of Emmanuel Trefilio is a performing bandoneon player. And uh, for those of you who don't know, a bandoneon is uh, the typical sound of the tango. Piazzolla played one. It's kind of like a concertina, small accordion. 
and the buttons are in a random order that makes no sense if you've ever played one. So it's kind of like a keyboard instrument, kind of like a um, like an accordion, but has taken on a, a whole new life in tango. Uh, and so this music is inspired by that sound, and it's arranged for a string quartet. It's called October in DC.
missions, and this next piece is um, one of a, an example of that. It's a part of an ongoing um, initiative we're calling American Postcards, where we work with um, young composers around the country to pick a place and time in American history that's important to them, and then compose for it using our unique style. So not just for string quartet, but try to incorporate banjo and mandolin and singing sometimes. And this piece is by a previously local composer, Akshaya Abdul Tucker. She just moved to LA like a month ago. But she was at uh, the University of Texas with us when we were studying there. And she is um, very interested in the North Indian classical traditional music and how that might interplay with a traditional Western string quartet. So um, we wanted her to write in her style and we didn't really know what kind of place or time in history she would pick because American history feels so, like you just think of folk music or banjo or like how, how is that gonna fuse with um, Northern classical Indian music. So um, she actually picked 18, uh, where is it, 1854, Thoreau um, at Walden Pond. And there's a, a quote, I'll just read the quote because it, it explains everything. This is from Thoreau himself. In the morning, I bathe my intellect in the stupendous and cosmogonical philosophy of the Bhagavad Gita, since whose composition years of the gods have elapsed. I lay down the book and go to my well for water, and lo, there I meet the servant of the Brahmin, priest of Brahma, and Vishnu and Indra, who still sits in his temple on the Ganges reading the Vedas, or dwells at the root of a tree with his crust and water jug. I meet his servant come to draw water for his master, and our buckets, as it were, grate together in the same well. The pure Walden water is mingled with the sacred water of the Ganges. So it's pretty amazing where these kind of influences might happen, especially back in 1854. Mm -hmm. And so this piece is called Our Waters. Thank you. 
Okay, so I told you all the Ravel would come back, kind of. This next piece is by uh, Jesse Montgomery, who's a really awesome chamber musician, composer, um, based in New York. Uh, the piece is called Strum, and you can really hear throughout how she's been influenced by a lot of these kind of pizzicato movements throughout the ages, but it also has a very, very unique kind of American voice to it that we really appreciate. Um, there's much else to say about it. This is Strum.
you so much. So we're going to play one more quick one before we go. But first of all, a huge shout out to St. Edwards for having us. We really appreciate it. Um, this is an awesome place to play. And let's give it up one more time for the projection team for all this awesome. <laughs> So, and he needs all of them for this next one. This is a, <laughs> Jeff mentioned the String Quartet Smackdown. So we played it two years in a row. Um, and the last, last year that we played it actually, the winner was a piece called Lift by Paul Bianco. And we didn't know Paul at the time, uh, but since we've gotten to know him a little bit better uh, and we discovered him through the piece basically, but he's also a string quartet cellist. And he wrote this amazing piece called Lift. We thought it was only about four minutes long um, and that's the section we're going to play for you today. Uh, but the full piece is about uh, 25, 30 minutes. And we've also played that piece. So if you're interested, if you like what you hear, this is kind of the, the very end. So spoiler alert, you know, cover your ears if you want to wait for the whole piece. <laughs> There's also a really great recording by the Izuri Quartet, um, which are also good friends of ours, which was nominated for Grammy. Yeah. yeah. That, that so uh, check it out, Paul Bianco's Lift. The whole album is really interesting. It also has a piece by um, uh, Evgeny Charlotte. Yeah, Evgeny Charlotte, who teaches at UT. So uh, some local people, some, um, Paul is based in New York. And uh, so, yeah, it's a really cool album. Does anybody have any questions? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. When you're playing the SmackDown, are you sight reading? No. Okay. No. I was like, that damn. Would be rough. <laughs> yeah, that would be really rough. No, we get about we get about six weeks to prepare, which is not a lot of time. It's the the pieces are supposed to be four minutes long. Mm -hmm. Some of them are longer, <laughs> um, and so it's usually about an hour fifteen worth of music straight through, and we have to prepare it all for one night, and then we record it the next day, basically. So it's basically like a performance, and then either one or two days of recording, um, and it's usually kind of a cram fest for us. It's fun, and we get to discover a bunch of new pieces, but it's also like very, very grind, pedal to the metal, fun week. So, any other questions? Is it just up to your artistic interpretation, to, or do, do the composers give you kind of like a note, you know, like a director's note? It, it depends on the piece. Some pieces are very meticulously notated, and we don't really have to. But it's it's also an interesting uh, it's an interesting uh, process for us to have to learn the pieces that quickly because normally you know for a piece like Our Waters we workshopped it with the composer she sent us drafts and we played for her and she came to rehearsal etc over the course of many months but for the SmackDown uh, we don't have that much time we basically have to get the pieces and work them up very quickly so some things we have to ask the composer because they're more or less clear. Um, but some things we just kind of have to wing or come up with our own interpretation. So, no viola. So what, are, what do we want to play? Hard times. Hard times, okay. So <laughs> you, you will have to listen to the recording because we're not gonna play lift because we don't have a viola anymore. So <laughs> what we're gonna do instead is our own rendition of a Stephen Foster classic tune. This one's called Hard Times Come Again No More. <laughs> Oh! 
times come again no more. Many days.